Hello gorgeous peeps, I'm Chris from Techspert and today we're going to be taking a full on squint at the Nokia 3.4 at just 129 quid, one of the cheapest smartphones that you can buy in 2020 here in Blighty, although not quite the cheapest. Just last week for instance I checked out the Nokia 2.4 which cost just 99 quid despite being a fully featured smartphone. But all the same a very low price indeed and you do get that lovely stock Android experience complete with two years of guaranteed Android upgrades and some pretty respectable specs. So let's yank the Nokia 3.4 out of its box, check out the hardware and the software, test out the game and prowess with a bit of Call of Duty Mobile and have a squint at that camera tech as well. And for more of the latest greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! Now with the Nokia 2.4, the box art teased me with the gorgeous pinky purpley uh, version and what I actually got was the charcoal sort of dark grey version. Let's see if they've done the same with the Nokia 3.4. Yes, they have. Never trust a Nokia box, ever. Anywho, let's see what you get in here besides the phone. So you always get a porky pin device to actually get your SIM in the thing. You've got your power adapter with Amusin pop-up action. And you've got your USB cable, which, thank the baby Jesus, is Type-C, not micro-USB, unlike the Nokia 2.4. And that's your whack, nothing else of interest in there, although HMD Global did say that in some regions you would get a jelly case, as they term it, condom case, as I prefer, uh, stashed in the box as well, just apparently not here in Blighty. Now, the design of the Nokia 3.4 will definitely give you serious deja vu chills if you've uh, seen or looked at any Nokia smartphones of recent times. You've got some reasonably chunky bezels on there with a good bit of the Nokia brand and uh, down below and then around back a simple plastic finish definitely feels like one of those old school uh, Nokia backs that just prizes right off so you can get to the battery and the sim slot and everything in size uh, you've got a nice textured pattern finish to it so that should help with grip at least and you do actually have a proper metallic frame as well just sandwiched in between that plastic back and the actual glass display. And yes, this is the decidedly dull charcoal finish, but if you check out the box, you can see uh, the lovely blue hue, uh, which is known as Fjord, uh, which is available here in the UK on the Nokia website. Otherwise, you can also grab the Nokia 3.4 in a purpley pink color as well, known as Dusk. As you can see, you get a rear-mounted fingerprint sensor just slapped there on the back of the Nokia 3.4. Uh, you've got a lovely circular camera chassis, which only juts ever so slightly from the back end. And like a surprising number of budget Android phones in 2020, you do get a dedicated Google Assistant button slapped here on the left edge too. Now, while the Nokia 3.4 is booting up, let's just have a bit of a squint at that SIM tray and see what we're dealing with there. And it's a proper triple monster, as you can see there. So space for two SIM cards at the same time and also a separate slot here in the end for a micro SD memory card. And that can boost the available storage by a further 512 gigs, not too shabby at all. All right, so the Nokia 3.4 is all set up and ready for action. And it is an Android One handset. So like all Nokia branded handsets, you get a nice stock version of Android slathered on here. Unfortunately, it's not the very latest. Android 11 is the older Android 10, which is of course over a year old now, but apparently it's Android 11 ready. So we hopefully won't be waiting very long at all for that upgrade. And of course, with uh, all Nokia branded smartphones, you get two guaranteed years of Android OS upgrades and three for the security. It is lovely having that nice stock version of Android on there. Of course, that means you don't get a lot of pre-installed crapware or anything like that, just basically those Google apps. And of course, any big fans of the Google Assistant are well catered for by that dedicated button. I still think it's a completely pointless addition because there are plenty of other ways of calling up the Google Assistant like swiping up from one of those bottom corners but I get the feeling that Google might be insisting quite heavily that that button is included on these cheaper handsets because like the Nokia and Motorola are slapping them on pretty much every bloody phone these days. Oh and the Nokia 3.4 also has full support for Google Pay as well and you've got NFC uh, go away Google Assistant god damn it seriously you've got full NFC support on here as well for your contactless payments which is very handy considering pretty much every retailer only takes contactless now. Uh, the older no Nokia 2 2.4 did have Google Pay on here, but it did not have NFC, uh, which I stated in my video, so whoopsies. Now the Nokia 3.4 spots a 6.4 inch display, which by all means is relatively bloody compact for a 2020 handset. It's IPS tech, and of course this is a very budget smartphone, so you certainly shouldn't expect visuals that will slap you in their face with their absolute gorgeousness. You've got an HD plus resolution, 1560 by 720, so pretty standard for this sort of sub 150 pound price point. Images are still reasonably crisp, but of course you will notice a bit of grain, a lack of finer detail when you're checking back your photos, watching a movie, something like that. And the color reproduction is rather timid as well, certainly more vibrant hues don't pop or sparkle in the 
the way that they would do on more premium smartphones, but for just watching a bit of YouTube or something, this will absolutely do the job fine. And here on the top brightness levels, it's certainly not going to do your eyes any damage. On a very bright sunshiny day, you might struggle to see what's going on though. And of course you do have your wee selfie camera orifice stuck away up in that top corner. Pretty standard again for Android smartphones in 2020. And then when it comes to the audio as well, of course it's a mono speaker output, just this tiny little dinky speaker on the bottom end. But they sometimes pack a good punch. Let's boost up the volume, see what we got. It is a lot of the time when I'm uploading this show, I'm like 50-50 on whether I'm actually <laughs> going to get any of these adverts on. So to be honest, even if you bust out your Nokia 3.4, uh, ramp up that volume to maximum levels and stop blasting a bit of the Prodigy or something like that, you're probably not going to get too many uh, wicked stares from grandmothers or anything like that. It's not exactly super powered, uh, although it's absolutely fine. Again, if you're in a not particularly noisy environment, you should be fine for watching a bit of YouTube or something. And you do thankfully have your headphone jack up top as well, which is pretty common on these budget blowers. Although when it comes to the Bluetooth connectivity, it is the older Bluetooth 4.2 on the Nokia 3.4. You don't get the latest Bluetooth 5 action. Now for this sort of ask and brush, you shouldn't expect sterling performance out of a smartphone, that's for sure. You do have the Qualcomm Snapdragon 460 chipset stuffed in here, uh, which is seen on a couple of other budget friendly blowers like the Oppo A53 and the OnePlus Nord N100. And that's backed on my review model by three gigs of RAM, although you you can grab it with four gigs in certain regions as well. And as you can see, the benchmarking score is certainly nothing to scream home about. And I've definitely seen a fair few stumbles and stutters as I've been flicking through menus and all that kind of shenanigans as well. But again, it'll do your everyday tasks absolutely fine if you're just looking for something to, you know, catch up on your emails, chat with mates, things like that. I certainly wouldn't want to attempt to do a proper bit of gaming on a, uh, a smartphone like the Nokia 3.4, beyond the likes of Candy Crush or whatever it was called. But of course, because I'm an absolute masochist, I'm going to attempt to get a bit of Call of Duty on the go. Why not? And you know what? Colour me pretty effing surprised because Call of Duty Mobile actually ran absolutely fine on the default low detail settings on the Nokia 3.4. The frame rate was nice and smooth and stable and I didn't see any kind of glitching or anything like that. And the problems that I had with the Nokia 2.4 when I was playing Call of Duty were mostly to do with the screen response rate. I found that it, just, it was just a little bit too sluggish. Every swipe and, and prods just wasn't registering immediately. Whereas here on the Nokia 3.4, it was perfectly playable. I even managed to rack up 30 kills in a single match, which... Uh, I certainly was not expecting to do. So yeah, if you're looking for a, a budget blower, an extreme budget blower, to play a bit of your Call of Duty or PUBGs, this should actually do the job all right. And bear in mind, this is just the Nokia 3.4 with three gigs of RAM in it as well, not even the four gig model. Uh, but if you do get the three gig of RAM uh, version of the Nokia 3.4, you'll also only get a rather meager 32 gigs of storage, which of course will fill up pretty damn fast. I've only installed a handful of apps, and as you can see, I've already used a good chunk of that storage. If you're going to be taking lots of photos and everything as well, then uh, uh But of course, yeah, at least you do get the likes of the Google Photos online storage, which apparently you're going to have to pay for from June 2021. Ah! But if you do upgrade to that uh, Nokia 3.4 with 4 gigs of RAM, then you will double that storage as well to 64 gigs. And of course, you've got that micro SD memory card support up to another terabyte of storage on there, so you should be all right. As for the battery tech, well, you got a 4,000 milliamp cell stuffed inside of the Nokia 3.4, uh, which I would expect to see it through two full days of just standard sort of web browsing, messaging, things like that, especially as you've got the likes of, you know, the Android adaptive battery feature on there, uh, which just calls a lot of the background tasks when they're not needed. And you do only get a 5 watt charger bundled in the box, so it will take a while to power the Nokia 3.4 back up again, although apparently it does support up to 10 watt charging uh, if you have your own charger. Still not exactly blow your underpants off in merriment sort of fast, but you know, whatever. And now flipping over the Nokia 3.4 to bang on about the camera tech, I've completely forgot to mention about the fingerprint sensor, which seems a perfectly respectable budget scanner. Uh, so the phone's hibernate and tap your finger against there. It takes a second or so to register. Uh, so not super nippy, but it seems fairly accurate. You know, very rarely get a, uh, a duff read response. And you do actually get facial recognition on the Nokia 3.4 as well, which is great as a bit of backup. So just tap that power button and then flick your finger on the screen, and as you can see, registers your mug, job done. Although this only seems to work with respectably lit environments, of course, if you're in a dark room or something, it's probably gonna struggle a bit. So now with that done, we can get onto the final subject of the Nokia 3.4 unboxing, and that is the triple lens array camera, headed up by a 13 megapixel primary shooter. And there's certainly quite a few features packed into uh, HMD's camera app here on the Nokia 3.4, certainly for a 130 pound smartphone. 
and also a god awful shutter noise as well which hopefully you can turn off in the settings yes thank god because you can't actually change what the noise is and the shutter speed and processing time seem absolutely fine though for a budget blower because you've got full hdr smarts as you can see there and at any point you can also flick to that ultra wide angle lens with a quick tap down there it's a basic five megapixel effort though so uh, don't expect the finest of detail in those photos and certainly with that primary lens uh the, you know the detail levels are absolutely fine for an indoor environment the colors aren't quite naturally reproduced they're a little bit faded and again a similar story with that ultra wide angle lens not exactly the finest detail so if you view these photos back on a tv screen or a monitor they're going to look a bit fuzzy uh, but absolutely fine for just you know sharing with mates on facebook things like that the third lens in this triple setup arrangement is a two megapixel depth sensor so that'll just help out with your portrait shots help to keep your subject crisp and add a nice bokeh style effect in the background and hmd is thrown in the usual bit of bokeh flair as well so you can make the background look like hearts butterflies snowflakes whatever you fancy and last up the Nokia 3.4 also rocks a night mode for your photos as well so if it is a low light shot that you are trying to grab uh, that will just basically take lots and lots of different shots different exposure levels mix them all together and that actually seems to produce more natural looking colors than just using the standard photo mode and you've also got a lot more sort of background detail and everything going on as well and then if you want to shoot uh, your bit of whole movies and all that you can shoot up to full HD resolution footage uh, using that primary lens you can also swap to the ultra wide angle lens for your bit of video too although I'd say that's probably going to look rather grainy shooting with a 5 megapixel sensor that's for sure and then if we swap around to the front facing camera it's an 8 megapixel effort so again it should be all right for your sort of basic everyday shareable shots as long as you're not like moving or talking as you take the selfie because you'll come out as a bit of a blurry blob so that right there in a nutshell is the nokia 3.4 from hmd global and for 129 quid you do get a fully fledged smartphone experience sure the performance is a bit jittery here and then, of course, you've only got a basic HD plus screen, but overall, it's fine for streaming a bit of media. You could actually get some gaming on the go on the likes of Call of Duty, which I was not expecting. The battery life should be absolutely fine too. So that's what I think of the Nokia 3.4, but have you been using it as your full-time smartphone? It'd be great to hear your thoughts down in the comments below you on that little mini review. Uh, as I say, I've unboxed the Nokia 2.4, which is even cheaper at 99 quid, although a bit more limited in the actual performance and the specs. Uh, so go check that out if you've got a little bit less cash to spend. Otherwise, I've rounded up my favorite budget phones under 200 pounds of 2020 as well so go check that out for other alternatives and for more on the latest greatest tech please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell cheers